from Mongolia all the way to Islamic land, to Muslim lands. And within 35 years, most of the historians say 35 years from al Nongra, Well Dorant, and many of the historians they say, within 35 years these people started raising Islam. Afterwards they, become, they became gods of Islam. The Salajika, the Ottomans, the roots are from the, in the same place. So they became Muslims. And this is, this is a reality. Whenever non-Muslim nations come towards the Muslim uh, nations, they mingle with them, they, they, they taste the Islamic culture and Islamic creed, they, ex they tend to accept it. And this is exactly what, what happened with many people. Many non-Muslims who come to Muslim countries, they change many opinions. Because the media keeps on set, you know, conveying the improper message to the people until the people are fully fully blocked that these Muslims are, there's no good in them. But when they come and practically see the Muslims and stay with them and live with them, they find them totally different. الضرورات تبيح المحظورات الضرورات تبيح المحظورات ضرورات and necessities تبيح means makes lawful المحظورات what's unlawful means necessities makes the unlawful lawful but this is there is a dire necessity now what is a necessity by the way the fuqaha says necessity is a state in which you will lose your soul your life or you will lose a major part of your body that's necessity or you will lose your dignity and honor. That's necessity. Otherwise, in tiny cases, where you are not losing except few dirhams, that's not necessity. That's not. If you are losing your, 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 your life, that's a necessity. So, الضرورات تبيح المحضورات In the case of ضرورات, in the case of necessity, the محضورات, the unlawful things becomes lawful. We have the example from the Quran that uh, that the person who is in dire need uh, for such a person, they, uh, they carry on the dead animal is lawful, they, the flesh of dead animal is lawful. So this is in the case of necessity. We have many examples from our practical life actually. <coughs> This matter, a person who is in a dire necessity, for instance, a person who is in a dire necessity that he is going to lose his life, you may use a medicine for him, which includes some unlawful ingredient. This could be in the state of dire need, but not in every in every tiny uh, sickness which afflicts a person. I remember the story of uh, the. Sumayyah bin Tukhayyab, the first shaheed in Islam. Her son, Ammar bin Yasir, was beaten, was beaten severely that he was almost about to lose his life. He lost his, uh, his consciousness actually, but they didn't kill him, they left him. And then when he wakes up, they beat, start beating him again. And they would say to him, if you curse Prophet Muhammad, we leave you alone, we will not kill you. And at the end of the day when he thought that this is the this is the end. Allah I'll die now. He cursed Prophet Muhammad just to release himself. And then when he came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I committed something very bad, something close to kufr. That they kept beating me until I say improper things about you. The Prophet Sallallahu said, No problem, if they beat you again, say it again to them. To release to, to protect your life, they will kill you. So they kill your mother, and they have no, no fear from God. They, they kill you for any tiny matter. So al-darurat to tubiq al mahdurat If a person is in a dire need, then uh, the mahdurat, the unlawful things, becomes lawful for the person. Uh, this is a very important principle here, which is mentioned: darul mafasid the awla min jalbil manafa. Darul mafasid means to repel the harms. Jalbul Manafa means to gain some, some to, to earn some gains, to earn some benefits. So it's saying Darul Mafasid, to repel the harms is more important than earn some benefits. 
you are in a case in which you are earning some benefits, some lawful benefits, but at the same time you have to you have to accept some harms. So what should you do now? The principal is saying to you that to repel the harms is more important. It is more important than the gains which you make. So if it's a case in which there's a harm and a gain, to repel the harm is more important, so leave that gain because of the harm which is associated with it. To repel the harm is more important than to make a gain or to make a benefit. Last principle which we will take here is al adatu muhakkima. al ada means a custom. Muhakkima means it is implemented. Customs are implemented. This is very important, especially for students of knowledge. Anything which is traditional, which is customary, people tend to call it as bid'ah or improper or just to reject it. The principle here, which is based on Quranic verses and a hadith, is saying al adatu muhakkima, that customs are implemented. Don't be reading the Quran in Surah Al-A'raf, khudil afwa wa amur bil urf, that command the people that with that which is in accordance with the urf, with the customs. There are many things in the Sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, which are based on custom. Many contracts, Muzara, for instance, Salam, for instance, Murabaha, Tawliya. Many contracts which were approved by the Prophet, which are based on Arab uh, customs. The customs, the Fuqaha, the Jews, they say the customs are rejected only in one case if they are contradicting with clear text. For instance, men and women are shaking hands. This is the custom of some countries. Can we accept this custom? If this is the custom, we have to reach it because this is it's a textual source. There's a text which is saying to us not to do this. So this custom will be rejected. There's a, there's a country in which the women are, are wearing white clothes instead of black. Here in UAE, women normally use black clothes. Black, uh, you know, this uh, I buy. I buy. There are other places where they use blue, some countries they use white, some countries they use... So this is custom. The principle is saying, the custom is implemented. Don't break the customs. Just see if these customs are contradicting with the text or not. If they are contradicting, then break the custom. If they are not contradicting, is there any hadith which saying women should not wear white clothes? There's no hadith saying so. So you should not trouble women if they are wearing, wearing white uh, ibaya or hijab or whatever. And so on. This is only an example. So the customs should be respected of any, whether you are a Muslim country or a non-Muslim country. Should, you should not forget that the Muslims traveled to Abyssinia in the Meccan era and they respected the customs there. They didn't trouble the people there. And then they were able to reach to the ruler and they present Quran to the ruler. Imagine if the Muslims from the day one, they start breaking the customs and troubling the people and making a bomb blast here and drop. What will be the response of the people there? They'll never like these people. They'll never listen to them. In fact, they'll try their best to get rid of all these people. So, the al-adat al the customs should be... We all know the constitution of Medina. The constitution which was made by the Prophet, peace be upon him, one of the, the constitution of Medina is considered to be the first constitution in human history. There was no country which is having a constitution like the constitution of Medina, which the Prophet Sallallahu made, in which the rights of the Jews and the people of the book of the Muhajirin and Ansar was discussed together. So the, 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 the tenets of, these, uh, of this contract or this um, uh, constitution was based on what? Based on aqila, based on butun, based on all those things which were actually custom, customs of that of that locality. So he's maintaining the customs. And he also said, because the Arabs were having this tradition that if you made a contract in, uh, with someone, your friends are having to enter that contract with you. And his friends are having the right to enter the contract with him. Is you both made a contract that five days we'll use the well and five days they will use the well. This is a contract between you and them. Your friends are having the right to do what you are doing. They can enter your contract with the with the consent of the other party. <coughs> and the other party's friends are having the same right. <coughs> so they will have the right to drink from the well. <coughs> the 
Prophet will use the same custom in the constitution of Medina. They are making this contract between us, Mahajarin, Ansar, and Jews, and whosoever live, living there. And the friends of these people, if they want to join, they can join the contract. This is a pure Arab custom which the Prophet has implemented in that constitution. And there are many actually. This will come to the end of the session. May Allah reward you all for coming here and joining us. Barakallahu alaykum wa jma'in. Jazakum Allah khairan. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Walhamdulillahi wa bil'alamin.